welcome in the last classes we discussed on the design of heat exchangers using lmtd method and nt method in this class we are solving some numericals on heat exchangers the first numerical is a counter flow concentric tube heat exchanger is used to cool the lubricating oil for a large industrial gas turbine the flow rate of the cooling water through the inner tube is 0.18 kg per second while the rate of oil through the outer annulus is 0.12 kg per second the inlet and outlet temperatures are 95 degree celsius and 65 degree celsius respectively the water enters at 30 degree celsius to the heat exchanger here the given heat exchanger is an counter flow heat exchanger a counter flow heat exchanger is one in which both the fluids that means the hot fluid and the cold fluid flows in opposite direction a hot fluid is flowing in the problem he has given the hot fluid is flowing through the outer annulus and the cold fluid is flowing through the inner tube the hot fluid cools down from 95 degree celsius to 65 degree celsius that means the oil cools from 95 degree celsius to 65 degree celsius and the water enters it is flowing through the inner tube and it enters the heat exchanger at 30 degree celsius and he has given the mass flow rate of the hot fluid and mass flow rate of the cold fluid that is 0.12 kg per second and mass of the cold fluid that is the water is 0.18 kg per second and he has given that the neglecting the tube wall resistance fouling factors and heat lost to the surroundings calculate the length of the tube here we need to calculate what is the length of the heat exchanger neglecting the thermal resistance and heat loss to the surroundings and he has given the engine oil parameters means properties of engine oil and the water at 80 degree celsius and at 35 degree celsius in this problem he has given the properties in the problem itself if he has not given the problems in the if he has not given the property values in the problem we need to take down the values from the data and book at the average temperatures of the fluid for example for in for the engine oil he has given the inlet temperature as 95 degree celsius and the outlet temperature as 65 degree celsius the average of 95 plus 65 is 80 degree celsius we need to take down the values of engine oil at 80 degree celsius because engine oil is the hot fluid here here the hot fluid is the engine oil he has given in the problem itself a counter flow concentric tube heat exchanger is used to cool the lubricating oil that means the hot fluid is the lubricating oil which is used in an large industrial gas turbine and we need to take down if in the problem he has given the values property values directly if he has not given the property values directly we need to take down from the data and book in the data and book you were having the property values for metals alloys non metallic solids common materials similarly you are having the property values for the liquids in the data and book that i am using which is the 7th edition it is given in the page number 22 the page numbers may vary depending on the edition here i am using 7th edition in this data and book he has given the property values for liquids in the page number 22 okay for water he has given in the page number 22 and for engine oil he has given the property values in the page number 25 you can refer data and book to take down the values but here in this problem there is no need to 
refer data handbook as he has given the property values directly now we go through the problem in detail here yeah, what he has given the a counter flow heat exchanger is used to cool lubricating oil which is flowing through the annulus having outer diameter 40 mm and inner diameter 20 mm and the engine oil cools from 95 degree celsius to 65 degree celsius the water is used to cool the engine oil which is flowing through the inner tube and water enters the heat exchanger at 30 degree celsius that means he has given the three temperatures th1 th2 and tc1 he has not given the value of tc2 and he asks us to find what is the length of the heat exchangers in heat exchanger problems the problems can be solved by using two methods lmtd method that means the logarithmic mean temperature difference method and effectiveness method in if more than two temperatures are given then we will go for lmtd method if the number of temperatures given are less than two or two then we will go for effectiveness method here in this problem the temperature the three temperature values are given therefore the problem can be solved using lmtd method in lmtd method the heat transfer can be given by the equation q is equals to ua into theta suffix m where theta suffix m is the lmtd and a is the surface area through which the heat transfer takes place between the hot fluid and the cold fluid and u is overall heat transfer coefficient the surface area can be given by the equation pi into d into l pi d l and logarithmic mean temperature difference can be found by using the equation theta m equals theta 1 minus theta 2 divided by ln theta 1 by theta 2 which we already derived now to find lmtd we need four temperatures th1 th2 tc1 and tc2 but he has not given the temperature tc2 but we are adding the equation of heat transfer to find tc2 we know that the heat lost by the hot fluid is equal to the is observed by the cold fluid heat lost by the hot fluid is given by mh into cph into th1 minus th2 and heat observed by the cold fluid is given by mc into cpc into tc2 minus tc1 equating these two equations we can find tc2 once we find tc2 mh the value of mh is 0.12 kg per second cph is 2131 kilojoules sorry joules per kg degree celsius and th1 is 95 degree celsius th2 is 65 substituting these values we will get tc2 as 40.2 degree celsius now we are having all the four temperatures therefore we can find logarithmic mean temperature value which is 44.2 degree celsius once we find now we have found logarithmic mean temperature difference in the equation of heat transfer q is equals to u into pi d l into delta into logarithmic mean temperature difference we are having log we already found logarithmic mean temperature difference we are having the value of pi we are having the value of di which is given now the next thing we need to find to find length of the heat exchanger is u that is overall heat transfer coefficient to find overall heat transfer coefficient we need to make use of this equation 1 by u0 equals 1 by h0 into rfo plus r0 by k into lan r0 by ri in plus r0 by ri into rfi plus r0 by ri into 1 by hi he has given this equation in the data and book if you go for heat exchanges you go for heat exchanges 
fifth chapter and he has given this equation in page number he has given this equation in the page number 157 the page number may vary go for heat exchangers chapter there you will find the equation this equation for overall heat transfer coefficient but in the problem he has given neglect the internal thermal resistance and heat losses to the outside therefore neglecting the rfo values which is the internal thermal resistances are not by k he asked us to neglect the thermal resistance k and falling factors therefore the equation becomes simple and it becomes 1 by u equals 1 by h not plus 1 by h i where h not is the heat transfer coefficient u is overall heat transfer coefficient and h not is the heat transfer coefficient of the outer fluid that is which is the fluid which is flowing through the annulus that means the engine oil and h i is the heat transfer coefficient of the fluid which is flowing through the tube that is the water now we need to find h not and h i values to find h not and h i values we need to find the nusselt number he has given the equations for dimensionless numbers in the page number One one two in the page number one one two he has given the equations for the dimensionless numbers Nusselt number because here the transfer of heat between the two fluids takes place by combination of convection and conduction and radiation and it depends on various parameters therefore we group them into the some dimensionless numbers. to find h not and h i first we need to find out the nusselt number to find nusselt number we need to first analyze whether the given problem is turbulent flow or laminar flow therefore we need to find the reynolds number first now you need to go for convection since the flow is taking place through a to in convection go for internal flow it is given in the page number 124 the equation for the reynolds number is given which is 4m by pi d into mu where m is mass of the fluid d is diameter and mu is viscosity first we are finding the equation for internal flow that means for the h i value first we are finding the value of h i therefore we need to consider the property values for water which is flowing through the inner tube to find h i we need to consider the property values of water because it is flowing through the inner tube to find h not we need to consider the property values which are given for the engine oil because the engine oil is flowing through the annulus m is mass of the fluid the mass of the water is 0.18 kg d is 0.02 because the it is the inner tube through which the water is flowing the mu value is given for the water we got one reynolds number value as 1.58 into 10 to the power of 4 it is not having any units because it is a dimensionless numbers if you go through the data and book for internal flow if the reynolds number is less than 2300 then it is laminar flow if the reynolds number is more than 2300 it is considered as the turbulent flow in turbulent flow you are having the e various equations for the nusselt number if the nusselt number is in between 2300 2 1.25 into 10 to the power of 6 then we need to consider it as an fully developed flow
what is fully developed flow i will explain in the forced convection chapter now equation for the nusselt number for a fully developed flow is 0.023 into re to the power of 0.8 predal number to the power of n the equation is given in the page number 126 substituting the values of result reynolds number and predal number for water we will get the nusselt number as 98.84 and substituting this value in the equation of nusselt number we will get the value of hi that means internal heat transfer coefficient for water similarly we need to find out h0 value to find h0 value again we need to find out reynolds number for engine oil substituting the value of engine oil but the engine oil is flowing through the annulus therefore instead of d we in the place of 4m by pi d mu we need to may use the equation 4m by pi into d naught plus di into mu substituting the values of in property values of engine oil we get the reynolds number as 78.35 which is less than 2300 therefore it is in laminar flow in laminar flow for fully developed flow the nusselt number value is directly given there is no need of any equation to find nusselt number which is 3.65 now substituting this value 3.65 in the nusselt number equation that is h0 into the dimensionless number equation we will find we can find h0 value which is 25.2 watt per meter square degree celsius now substitute this value of h0 and hi in the overall heat transfer coefficient equation we can find overall heat transfer coefficient value now we found overall heat transfer coefficient value logarithmic mean temperature value and find we know the value of q now you can find the length of the tube 